I first came to Blue Scope, I actually started in this particular area, which is the iLabs building, where we do research and development for the company. Initially, I came here for my first internship. Then I went to the MCL, which is the metal coating line, and did some work on my second internship there. And now I'm back where I started from. The project I'm working on at the moment has been drawing on a lot of my experiences from those internships, both of those internships. I'm a laboratory technician and I'm working in developing a special product that will be released onto the worldwide market. My experience with Bluescape here is I've been working on paint coatings, so colour bond steel for the last 35 years now. Sounds like a, a long time, but that's really been spread over a, quite a diverse range of then involvements. So I've worked everywhere from producing the material, both here in Australia and at our operations in New Zealand Steel. Worked down at our, our plant down in Westernport as well, manufacturing Colourbond, and also consulting for our other businesses around the globe. But much time I've been spent here is in researching and working with our suppliers to develop new coatings. So this site here is really um, the home and the ongoing home of um, Colourbond development and of Zinclum Steel. Um, we, we take ownership of development work for not only the Australian business but the international Blue Scope business around developing and improving the coatings that we use, so both metallic coatings and what we call organic coatings, so paint top finishes. And that involves not only looking at how they perform in, in labs but we also manage our set of outdoor exposure sites around the world and we can track the performance of our product and make good decisions based on that. I'm a Durrambol woman from the area near Yapoon in Queensland. I did not grow up on country and I have had a bit of a dissection in my uh, historical background in terms of learning about my background. I've, I've come back to that as a result of a few family situations that have happened. My mother was in a large family of eight children and there were a lot of a lot of things that she wanted to take to the grave with her and as it turned out she was the last of her seven siblings to pass away and in the in the very last years of her life she started to divulge a lot of information that she really didn't want to talk about in previous years. One of which was that she didn't really have much education. She was not allowed to go to school and it was not talked about why she wasn't allowed to go to school and that this went on for quite some years. So eventually it came out that her father was rounded up and sent off to a leper colony in Queensland called Peel Island. And that's where they sent a lot of people that were either Aboriginal or had an association with an Aboriginal person. He was sent off to the leper colony and all, the ch all the, his children were isolated, something like what lockdown is now, but they were isolated for years and weren't allowed to go to school, which meant that she wasn't able to get a formal education. That was one of the, one of the factors that really wanted me to push towards getting a tertiary education and, and she's my inspiration for that. I was in an engineering degree in medical radiation physics. One of the things that is interesting about that particular field is there doesn't seem to be a natural crossover to anything that we're doing here at Blue Scope. However, they were able to place me into engineering roles, utilising a lot of the skills that cross over. We sort of thought that it's, it's really pointless to have um, a team that's made out of six goalkeepers, for example. We needed to round out our experience to make good decisions. And, and it's really panned out in terms of the benefits of having someone like Letitia on the scene is that we might have certain rivers of thinking around making a decision. We'll, we'll have a group and Letitia will sit quietly and listen into us content matter experts talk about something, but then she will bring up what she's seen as an observer and then feed that into what we're thinking. So her strengths in sort of broadly looking at data and analysing and coming up with um, sort of new thoughts on it just brings a total different angle to then our decision making. I think 
Indigenous people have a way of thinking about things that is not necessarily a, a straightforward way from A to B. And the benefit of that is that when it comes to problem solving, you have an extra set of eyes that are, are looking at, at the problem from a different lens. The most valuable thing for, for students to consider is that um, not to sell themselves short around the type of work that they've done and not to um, already pre-filter what they think their experience might contribute. If it's something that you have an interest in, try and pursue it because along the way you'll get a lot of support. Uh, through the university I got support through a program called ITAP, I -T -A -P, which is a tuition program. Whatever subject you're doing they find you a tutor that will help you along with the coursework and uh, give you more of a one-on-one. -on -one. That, that was uh, a big assistance to me in the subjects that I was maybe not so strong in. But every university in Australia has a, an Indigenous centre that will provide support in that way. Even though people have, they might have a completely different background from what they did before university, there's always a way that you can incorporate skills Maybe, maybe not necessarily technical skills, but life skills into the job that you're doing. Just pursue it, persist with it, and you know, it's not all gonna flow nicely, but it's something that if you're persistent, that you'll get there eventually.